reason, ritual. What? Uh, if I do something, if I do something faithfully, <laughs> like a little soldier in army, if I do something faithfully, then God is going to approve of me. Well, what have we done? We've gotten into now work salvation. If I just do something faithfully, then then I'm going to be approved of God. So if God can't get a, or Satan can't get us or the religion can't teach us how to be ritualistic and, you know, stand up, sit down, fight, 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 kneel down, stand up, roll on the floor. You know, if, if we can, if religion will teach us how to do a lot of things that really in the end uh, are just dead works, right. void of power, a form of godliness that denies the power thereof. But the other thing about Religion, what it teaches us is how to reason. Religion teaches how to reason. If something didn't happen, then there is a reason for it. People are so curious about why things happen that they'll develop a reason that really is not biblical. Well, I went through this horrible thing in my life, so God must be trying to teach me something. Well, perhaps you got a devil that's trying to steal, kill, and destroy. Perhaps there's an adversary that is after you, and you say, well, you know, I'm, I'm in the shelter of the Most High. I do, you know, scripture says, he that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide in the shadow of the Almighty. Well, are you really abiding, dwelling? I just have to ask you, are you really dwelling in the secret place of the Most High? Are people, I can say, I can say there are times I'm not dwelling there like I should. I seek to stay in that dwelling place. I endeavor to stay in that dwelling place. I desire to walk in the Spirit and not fulfill the lust of the flesh. I want to do what's right. But as Paul said, every time I try to do what's right, evil is always present. The point is, <laughs> Satan don't have to have a whole lot to do much. And really, many times it's not even Satan. Sometimes it's just poor decisions. Sometimes we make decisions based upon convenience. We make decisions based upon what's comfortable what feels good. People don't want to endure sound doctrine today, so what they'll do is they'll do, they'll do this church circuit, finding somebody that will say what they want to hear. And they'll land until pastor becomes pester. <laughs> people will land, people will hear something, oh, I like that. Ooh, God wants me to prosper. Woohoo. And then all of a sudden you say, well, are you a tither? Oh! <laughs> oh, I don't like that. And then they'll go find someplace else that, that you know, doesn't have to, doesn't speak on such things. That's why I'm glad uh, uh, Sister Georgiana talks about tithing because, you know, it, it takes the burden off of me to have to speak about it, and she's speaking the word, so I don't have to. I don't have to say a whole lot about it. Praise God. If we are going to one pray effective prayers, two have confidence in our prayers, three demonstrate the power of God in our daily lives, we must settle some things in our thinking. That's why the Apostle Paul said in Romans 12, "Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds." The mind is the place you think, reason, process information. Unless you're raised in a godly home where kingdom thinking is normal, you won't think any different than the way the world does. When kingdom principles are applied in the home, then it's just second nature to think right. When, when kingdom principles are taught in the home, you, you know, it, it's not even second nature, actually. It's nature. It, what's, what's supernatural becomes natural when it becomes normal. <laughs> right. 
Amen. You see, you see what I'm saying? See, we talk about the supernatural because it's above that which is natural, but when that which is super becomes natural or becomes normal, then it's no longer extraordinary. Now, we should still have a sense of awe when God does something, right? When God, when God provides, oh, hey, I got a $5 check in the mail this week. Woohoo! Praise the Lord for that. Amen? That was an unexpected blessing. Just like that time. It was an unexpected blessing. So we rejoice over the $5, just like we rejoice over the pair of socks, just like we re rejoice over the Mercedes, just like we rejoice over the new house, just like we rejoice over the roof, just like we rejoice over whatever God provides. But see, it's those things become a natural part of the believer's life as our life is hidden in him. Praise God. Ooh, let that sink in for a midget. A midget. <laughs> a midget. <laughs> ha, ha, ha. Well, thank you, Lord. You know, we need, we've got to get away from ritual and reason. We've got to get away from ritual and reason. Just because you can't figure it out doesn't mean it can't be figured out. Man, just because I can't figure it out, if you ask me a question, I'm not going to sit and act like I know if I don't know. I'll say, you know, I don't know. Or I'll get back with you. You know, let me go pray about it. Let me go search the scriptures. Let's pray. That's a novel idea. Let's pray and see if the Spirit of God shows us something. You know, so it's not that we know everything, and that's one of the things I want to encourage young teachers like, like Miss Leah and Miss Meredith here. You know, if you're in a classroom setting, a situation, and kids start acting questions, asking questions, acting questions, asking questions, they start asking questions, uh, it's okay to say, I don't know. I'll find out, but I don't know right now. Because what happens is, and I found this out from teaching at Teen Challenge and everywhere, really, is people will ask questions. I believe they're sincere in the question, but I believe sometimes they're sincerely coming from the wrong spirit. See, sometimes they have genuine questions that they want answers to, but it's not the right time or it's out of place. You're talking about one thing and they come up with something totally off the wall. It's a, it can be a distraction, can be. So you just have to discern, uh, do I take time for this or do we just, you know, shelve it? You know, some, some things you just got to put on the shelf and say, I'm going to put this on the shelf for right now. Let's all just put this on the shelf and then we're going to come back to it, open that little jar up and we'll, we'll smell that later. Okay. <laughs> Get a whiff of that later. <laughs> See, I want to help you develop confidence in your prayer life. You and I can live free from anxiety, stress, pressure, and fear. We can. All of these have consequences that lead to sickness, depression, headaches, heartache, and frustration. Ultimately, they can lead to frustration with God. Yeah. Anybody ever been frustrated with God? Yeah. yeah. God, now yeah, you know we've been doing this thing for a long time you know we've been praying standing in faith believing and you know, we get this little whiny thing going oh, god you know that or we just don't talk to him at all and say well <laughs> you know it's like the old thought you know what you don't give attention to will go away yeah, no <laughs> no it's still there it's still there ha 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 but god somebody say but god through the power of his word and spirit has set us free from the bondage of our past, present, and future. In other words, from anxiety, stress, pressure, and fear. When we become fully, fully, fully persuaded beyond the shadow of a doubt that God is a rewarder, not a killer, stealer, or destroyer, we can have that peace that's been given to us see our bodies were never meant to experience stress pressure fear that's why that's why timothy paul said 
Paul said, you've not been given the spirit of fear or timidity, but of power, love, and a sound mind. So you've not been given the spirit of fear or timidity. You've not been given the spirit of fear to back down and cower down in the midst of things going on around you. Not been, not been intended to, you've not been given that spirit of fear now. God has given you power, love, and a sound mind. When you stand up, and especially the young that are working in ministry, you know, despise not your youth. Amen? Praise God. The big question is, how do we get to the place in our walk with the Holy Spirit that when we pray, we know He hears and is hearing and working on our behalf? How do we develop confidence in our prayer life? There are so many questions that seem to go unanswered. What do we have a right to pray for? How do we know God will hear our prayer? How can we know we are praying the will of God? If God is in control of everything, why should we even pray? You know, these are good questions and they deserve an answer. Good questions. So there's, there's no dumb questions. There's only incomplete answers. <laughs> There's, there's no dumb questions, only incomplete answers. Incomplete answers leave you asking more questions. You know, um, I'm going to give you some scriptures, and I just want you to write them down. And I want you to take these, and I want you to be praying and meditating on these scriptures. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18. Psalm 35, verse 27. Luke 6, 38. Luke 6, 38. Proverbs 19, 17. Psalm 112, verses 1 through 5. Psalm 37, 25 to 26. Give you a chance to. Psalm 37, 25 and 26. Philippians 4, 14 through 18. Second Corinthians 8, 1 through 7. See, all of these are passages that helps us to discern what does God say about poverty and po prosperity. And, and the, the reason I believe this one came up to me first as I was praying about this was you'll get people that'll ask you to pray for them about their finances. You'll get people ask you to pray about their health and their family. But I believe there are principles that can be drawn out of does God want you to live in lack or does God want you to have your needs met I believe if you, when we talk about these things, there are going to be principles that will apply in many other areas as well. And of course, there's scriptures for each, each thing that we talk about, whether it's prosperity, health, healing, family relationships, uh, your job, all these things. God has something to say about all of this. And if we're going to pray and hit the mark, we want to have an accurate understanding and knowledge of what God has already said so that we don't have to try to figure it out. When you already know something, you don't have to question it. When you already know God's will concerning prosperity, you don't have to ask him, you know, God, where's the money? Or God, what's going on? When you get to a place where your trust 
in the word of God and in the provision of God, when you get to the place where that supersedes the fear, that supersedes the, 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 the stress and the pressure and the struggle, you get to the place where you're, you're completely, as, as Abraham, fully persuaded that what God has said he's able to do. This is probably our biggest, the biggest enemy and the biggest purpose for reason in the church. Well, I guess it just wasn't God's will. Well, you see, see what I'm saying here? See, we, we get into discussions about things, but I, I find that people more, more often than not don't even bring the scripture into it. When we're talking about something, that's why I say, you know, I, 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 when I'm talking to the guys over at Teen Challenge and they come up with some kind of thought or some kind of idea, I'll say, well, where is that in Scripture? And, you know, nine times out of ten, times out of ten they can't show me. They just heard somebody say something or they, they saw something on a TV show or they heard their pastor or a teacher or they heard somebody say something and they, we even had a guy uh, the other day uh, <clears throat> say, well, I don't know if this is a, uh, a parable and he started talking about this thing that had, it was not in the Bible at all, but he thought it was a parable in the scriptures. So see, that's why, you know, we've got to be, knowledgeable of what God's will is so that when you hear something that's funny or off, you'll recognize it. So somebody starts saying something, you know, uh, I'll just say, well, can you show me a scripture on that? Well, they'll give you some kind, it's always Job and it's always um, Paul's thorn in the flesh. Those are the two things out of all the Bible. All the Bible. <laughs> Two things out of all the Bible. And they make a they make a, a they make a dogma. I saw I saw a bumper sticker the other day that said uh, uh my karma uh just beat up your dogma. <laughs> my karma beat up your dogma. <laughs> it's like and he had his coexist and all this other stuff, you know. And, and on his, he's he's one of these where you know everybody should just can't we all just get along? You got the mentality of the uh, Rodney King, yeah. I got the got the Rodney King mentality. Can't we all just get along? Well, you guys, <laughs> we certainly certainly want to get along, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Well, guys, I honestly don't have enough time to tackle each scripture reference that I gave you, and I don't want to keep you here in, for another hour, which would be so easy to do. But what I want to what I want to conclude with, and just I want this just thought to to be planted right now. I want to, I want to sow this seed. When it comes to finances, God wants to give us wisdom when we pray. I firmly believe that when we pray, we are seeking answers at times. If we don't know what God wants, we're seeking an answer. Now, God will give us James, James 1. You, you, can, you can turn there, okay? James 1. A lot of the issues that we have concerning prayer faith, trusting God, come down to we just don't know. So I would rather be honest with our ignorance in an area. Ignorance is not bad. Ignorance is curable with knowledge. The stupidity, however, is terminal, as somebody said. But ignorance is curable with knowledge. So if you don't know something, that's okay. Just say, I just don't know. And the best person to say I don't know to is God. Lord, I don't, I don't know. And here he says, James 1, chapter 5 through 8, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that gives to all men liberally 
and upbraids not, and it shall be given him. I'll stop right there. Sometimes what God may speak to your heart may not sound like him. <laughs> okay. It may not sound like him. You, you're going to find, looking at these scriptures that we gave, that each one gives you a prescription, if you will, in pill form. Each one gives you a prescription, if you will, on how to prosper. He that lends to the poor does what? Lends to the Lord. Now, if you lend to the if you lend to the Lord, do you think he's not able to repay? You lend something to the Lord? Do you think he's not able to repay? Well, he gives me spiritual blessings. Well, bless you and your spiritual blessings. <laughs> God's not asking you to give him a spiritual blessing. He's asking you to give a physical blessing. <laughs> Somebody needs $5 and you say, go in peace, be blessed. Come on now. <laughs> isn't, that what, isn't that what John said? Was, he said, you're deceiving yourself. Oh, be blessed, be warmed and blessed and go in peace. I needed five bucks, dude. <laughs> Come on. That's just one thing I want to give you this morning. But remember this, let, look at verse 6. But let him ask in faith. Okay, if you're believing God for wisdom, ask in faith and don't waver. For he that waver is like, wavers is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. Let not that man think he shall receive anything from the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. So if we don't know something and we're asking God. Sometimes, okay, uh, give and it shall be given. Press down, shaken together, and running over. One of the one of the principles, Luke six thirty eight. Okay, Lord. I need a financial breakthrough in this area. I need you to show me how to work. Given it shall be given, that word comes to you. And you're sitting here trying to rub two nickels together. Give. Give. If it doesn't meet your need, then what is it? A seed. If it doesn't meet your need, it's, it's a seed. Give and it shall be given, pressed down, shaking together, and running over some men return unto your bosom. You hear that you hear that come to your mind and say, Well, that don't sound like God. I thought he was going to show me where to fill out an application. <laughs> or or better yet, where to go and, and get help. <laughs> God's surely going to show me where to go get help, right? And he says, Give and it shall be given, pressed down, shaking together, and running over some men return unto your bosom. Well, this is all I got, Lord. He knew that. <laughs> He knew that when he said that, didn't he? He knew that when you asked the question, Lord, what should I do? Give and it shall be given. Seed time and harvest, sowing and reaping. Well, Lord, I'm trusting you with it. Here it is. Okay, take what I got. That's it. That's all I got. Well, he didn't ask for anything else. Proverbs 26, 2, and I, I'm going to close with this. Uh, I'll just say this. Since poverty is a result of the curse, now we know that. Poverty is a result of the curse. We can see that blessings through the scriptures that I gave, and I'm going to go over the, all those scriptures next time, next Sunday. The blessing flows freely when the plan of God is implemented. Prayer does not replace compassion and obedience to God's word. Did you get that? Prayer does not replace compassion and obedience to God's word. I know this is deep, this is heavy, this is probably hard, but this is just the way it came. <laughs> I was like, Lord, okay, whatever. Prayer does not, because we want to, sometimes we want to pray. God speak to us. Oh, got to do that. Okay, do that. Well, but I'd rather pray some more. <laughs> 
Let's just pray some more about this until we get the answer that we're looking for. Prayer does not replace compassion. You'll find that in these passages that compassion has benefits. Expressing compassion has benefits. You'll find that grace, that there is a giving of a grace of giving. And that grace of giving produces. The word gives us God's remedy for poverty and lack. But Proverbs 26, 2 is a, is a curious scripture. As the bird by wondering, as the swallow by flying, so the curse causeless shall not come. The curse causeless shall not come. If there's a curse operating somewhere in our life, the scripture says there's a cause. The curse causeless shall not come. Does that mean you're in sin? No. What was uh, was Job in sin? No. Nope. 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 So you can tell people right off the bat. I agree with you on that. <laughs> tell them all, all right off the bat. No. Job's problem was his fear. The thing I greatly feared has come up on me. So possibly fear is operating, and it's something that we kind of tolerate, don't we? Sometimes. How many find themselves tolerating fear in an area until you got an ulcer and you got to go take a something for it? Or how, how many people end up tolerating something in their life for so long and that it just becomes a part of them? And they think, well, it's just, just this is the way it is. It's just this the way I am. Can't get around this. I, I, wanted, I, wanted, I wish this was not in the Bible. I wish this was not in the Bible because it doesn't mean it doesn't mean you're in habitual sin. It doesn't mean that that we do are doing anything necessarily uh, overtly that is causing a problem. Hosea 4, 6 still is 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 just as true today as it was 2000 years ago. Uh, My people are destroyed for what? A lack of knowledge. Hosea 4, 6, that's a very good scripture to put to memory. Hosea 4, 6, and Proverbs 26, 2. They, they actually go hand in hand. Do, do you follow me this morning on this? Uh, what, I want and I'm tr- uh, what I want to do, and I, I believe with the help of Holy Spirit, we're going to begin to pray prayers that are necessary. And we're told pretty much verbatim how to pray in Scripture. If all we did was pray the Bible, (laughs) I would say we'd probably get a lot of answers to prayer. Maybe not in the time we're thinking it should come, but, you know, God's never late. He's, He's always on time. But I wanted to present this to you just in getting this whole conversation of of praying, of praying effective prayers, praying uh, prayers that avail much. And and I I honestly believe that one thing that we'll get into is that Jesus said, the Holy Spirit will show you things to come. He'll show you things to come. Why do bad things happen to good people? They, they missed the memo. <laughs> I'm being a little facetious here, but uh, do you get what I'm saying? The, there, there was a memo from God somewhere, a warning sign. There was something that said, you should have turned right instead of left. You should have waited another five minutes. You should have done something in, in this way or uh, another. And we missed the memo. The Holy Spirit was trying to show us, keep us, keep us out of harm's way, but somehow we missed the memo. Holy Spirit will lead us into all truth. He'll, he'll teach us all things. He'll show us things to come. That's, that's, the, that's the work of the Holy Spirit. And did we talk about the this Holy Spirit teaching coming up? Man, this is, this is going to be good stuff. <laughs> oh, man, it's going to be good stuff. Um, and we're not going to start this next Sunday, the 20th. 
we're going to start the 27th. Okay? I want to get this in the paper. I want to put flyers together. I want to, I want to give uh, as many people an opportunity to receive uh, this word. And if they can't be here in the, in the sanctuary, you know, hey, it's, it's online. They can, they can listen to it, watch it, whatever, online. But I believe this is so important for the day that we live is having and developing relationship with the Holy Spirit. He, he, he's not an it He's not a he's not a spaceman. He's not some freaky, scary thing. No, he he is here. He is alive. He is working in the church, and we need to trust that that he's our comforter, our help, and he will show us things to come. Now I know. See, you know, I, I'm accused sometimes of giving out too much meat. Well, if this is too much meat, you know, chew on it, pray over it, you know, believe God, I'll give you copies of my notes so you can go and take a look at things and, and see how, how it all lays out. But guys, we've got to, we've, we've got to uh, become effective prayers and, and know the will of the Lord. We can know. We can know the will of God. Uh, you know, we, we can know. Can you say that? Can you make that confession? I can know the will of God. I can know the will of God. The, you know, saying that doesn't make it so. But at least saying it gets the, gets the, the, the right connectors firing and connecting. I can know the will of God. Ooh, that's a seed seed I don't know if I believe that well keep saying it and eventually the connectors will connect and it'll become one of those things that you wake up in the middle of the night and you think it's you think it's pizza or spaghetti sauce and you say and all of a sudden you get this thought I can know the will of God no that was God trying to get the point to you <laughs> right there. That's, that's, that's him saying see there <laughs> that's that's it right there I can know the will of God for my life amen well let's stand and close in prayer father I thank you so much for your word today. God, I do lift up those in the body. Uh, Lord, forgive me for throwing John Maxwell's name out there today. Forgive me for that. He, he's, a, he's a man of God and a, a great inspiration to many who are in ministry and many who are doing works uh, in the kingdom. But God, for our uh, for our brother John MacArthur today, I want to lift him up to you and just pray God that you reveal the power of Holy Spirit and how, Lord, you are moving in the earth today through the Holy Spirit. Lord, I thank you for a revelation in that camp of the power of God. Lord, I pray that folks in this camp uh, that he is in, that God, they will, uh, they will get a divine, they will have a divine encounter that they will not be able to deny. And Lord, I pray for those that are receiving from such ministries that are speaking against the Holy Spirit, that Lord, there will be mercy for them, that Lord, there will be mercy and that truth will prevail. Lord, I thank you for Israel today, and we bless Israel. We, we bless the seed of Abraham today. And Holy Spirit, just pray right now that those who would rise up against Israel, that every weapon formed against Israel will not prosper, and every tongue that rises up against them shall be condemned. This is your word. This is your will. Father, I thank you. We bless them and know that we will be blessed in return. Lord, thank you for the families of victory today. We bless bless Nathan, Alta, Alex, and their children. God, we bless uh, Mandy and, and the girls today, Sandra and the girls today. We bless them. And God, we thank you for what you're doing Thank you for the meeting that Pastor Don and I have this afternoon. 
God, pray that all will go, uh, go well and that, Lord, you will be glorified. Lord, thank you so much for all of the help. Lord, just a handful of people here doing so much. And Lord, we believe that it is making an impact. Thank you, Lord, for your word today. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. you have anything you want to say or add? Well, we appreciate you all today. And uh, God bless you again today. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Such a big help. And uh, all those that are, uh, see, this next week won't be uh, Smart Choice Distribution, but the week after. Oh, well, I guess it, yeah. Uh, we was just asked this week if we'd like to be on the Dixon Pastoral Ministers Council. Um, um, pray we'll, Pray with us about that, that it, you know, that it uh, not be a distraction. Um, you know, we th we really believe that this is an area that we've been believing God for. So don't believe it's a distraction, but we don't want to do something just because we think it's a good idea. Uh, so uh, pray with us uh, about this. Uh, I honestly believe it is a God idea, but there's always that, you know, that, God, I just want to make sure I'm not doing something that's that's not, uh, you know, not in the plan. So I, I believe, you know, you all, <laughs> you all with us have stood the test of time. And uh, whew, I just really appreciate it. Uh, and because we have stood the test of time, the, some of the things that we've been believing God for, uh, I believe are going to come to pass um, because we've been faithful. 